Today we're going to talk about the third way to write a rate law. Remember we've done three ways so far. The first is looking at data sets where we vary the concentration to see how that affects rate. The second is looking to see how a concentration changes over time and then graphing the concentration, the natural log of the concentration, or the inverse of the concentration versus time to see which gives us a straight line and that will determine if it's zero first or second order. And then finally we're going to look at reaction mechanisms today. Now, when we look at a reaction, we all really see overall what happens. We don't see the mechanisms, and that's what we're going to look at today. Become products, and that's a reaction mechanism. Reactions may occur all at once or through several discrete separate steps. Each of these processes is known as an elementary reaction or elementary process, each of those little steps. What we're going to do, this helps us summarize it. Reactions can be either unimolecular, bimolecular, or termolecular. Unimolecular is simply a decomposition reaction. That's when one substance breaks down, and so the rate law for a unimolecular reaction would be rate is equal to K times A. Now, one thing to notice about this, this is for the step of the mechanism. We can never write a rate law from the overall reaction, but we do and can't exactly write the rate law from the slow step of the mechanism. So each of these would represent the slow step of the mechanism. Next, we have bimolecular. Bimolecular can be two of the same reactants reacting, or two different reactants, or two different reactants reacting. Each of these, the overall order ends up as being two. And then we finally have termolecular reactions, and these are extremely rare. Think of the likelihood of three different atoms colliding exactly at the, the same time with the, exactly the right position and the right energy, so that would happen. So termolecular reactions are extremely rare, and we hardly ever see those. So we're not going to do much with a termolecular reaction. So reactions are multi-step, so let's say there's a part A and a part B. You can think about it as a car driving down a road. Let's say there's a plaza, and at one point it slows. Well, traffic can never go any slower or faster than the slowest portion where it stopped, and the same is true for reaction. So if we see here, the overall reaction cannot occur faster than the slowest step, and we call this slowest step, and that's very, this is very important, the rate determining step. So once again, the slowest step is called the rate determining step because regardless of how fast the other steps are, you can never go faster than the slowest step of the reaction. So we're going to look at two reactions. This is the first one. You've seen this reaction before. Actually, we found the order from this reaction using a different process. Today, we're going to do it using the me mechanism. So the rate law for this reaction is found to be rate is equal to K times a concentration of nitrogen dioxide squared. Notice carbon dioxide is not included in this. Carbon dioxide is necessary for this reaction to occur, but the rate does not depend on its concentration. So the, uh, this suggests that when we look at this, that the reaction occurs in two steps. And here we see a proposal for what the two steps are. We see a proposed mechanism is for step one for nitrogen dioxide to react with nitrogen dioxide. In, in doing that, it forms nitrogen trioxide and nitrogen monoxide. Now you notice in this, nitrogen trioxide does not stick around very long. That combines with carbon monoxide and produces nitrogen dioxide and carbon dioxide gas. Now a couple things to notice here. When you, if you were to add these together, you should get the overall reaction. So if I were to add this, notice the NO3 cancels, and that means it's what we call an intermediate. Intermediates are producing the reaction, but they're also used up, and they're not seeing the overall reaction. So nitrogen trioxide is an intermediate. Then notice we also see the nitrogen dioxide cancels out, and then that gives us what we have in our final reaction. We have nitrogen dioxide plus carbon monoxide produces nitrogen monoxide with carbon dioxide. So what's left is the overall reaction. So NO3 is what we call an intermediate. It's consumed in the second step. And carbon dioxide is not involved in the, uh, in the slow or rate determining step, so it doesn't appear in the rate law. Uh, so we, since we don't see carbon dioxide in that slow step, it's completely left out of the rate law. Really write the rate law for the slow step. And this is the only time you can use those coefficients in the, in the equation. Rate law from this slow step, you just look at the reactants, would be rate is equal to K times NO squared. And it's squared because there's one, two different nitrogen dioxide squared. So I think it said NO. Rate is equal to K times the concentration of NO2 nitrogen dioxide squared. 
And so next we're going to look, this is a second example of a reaction we're going to look at. In this one we have two nitrogen monoxides reacting with bromine as a gas and produces two uh, NOBRs. Now the rate law for this is actually found to be rate is equal to K times nitrogen dioxide squared, nitrogen monoxide squared, sorry, uh, times the concentration of bromine. Because this is a thermal, uh, processes are very rare, we're, we would most likely expect this to be a two-step mechanism because we're not expecting all these to clot at once. So let's look at a proposed mechanism for that. The proposed mechanism includes actually not only a slow step, but a fast step. And something that we see different in this fast step is we have an arrow going both ways. That tells us also that's, at, that's an equilibrium reaction. And that's important because that's going to allow us to do substitutions when we write the rate law for this reaction. If we were to do this, this the step one includes both a forward and reverse react, reaction. Now remember we can write a rate law from a slow step. And if we do that, it looks like this. The rate law from the slow, slow step would be rate is equal to K. And I'm saying two just because it's from the, this, that step. And it's got concentration of NOBR2 times NO. Now the problem with this is if you go back to our reaction, now NOBR2, if you remember that word, that's an intermediate. Intermediates cannot appear in the final rate law. So you can't have an intermediate in your rate law. So you can kind of figure out a way to get rid of this intermediate. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to write a rate law for this forward reaction, write a rate law for this reverse reaction, and then algebraically manipulate it so that we find what is equal just to NOBR and substitute these substances in for NOBR2. So let's show how that, that works. The rate law we, we said we, but how can we find NOBR2? So this is what we're going to do. NOBR2 can react two ways. It can form with the, uh, it can react with NO to form NOBR2 or by decomposition to reform NOMBR2. So the reactants and products for the first step are in equilibrium with each other. Therefore, we can say this, the rate of the forward is equal to the rate of the reverse. Now the little sub F here represents forward. The little sub R we see here represents reverse. So those two rates are equal. And since we know they're equal, we can actually set the rate laws for each side of those equal. We can say, because these are equal, we can say rate of the forward reaction, which is this one, is equal to K1 times N of concentration of nitrogen monoxide times concentration of bromine. Then we're going to say the reverse reaction is equal to this one. The rate of the reverse is equal to K negative 1, we're putting negative 1 because that's reverse, times the concentration of NOBR2. Now what we want to do is get NO, we want to substitute in for NOBR2. So basically what we're going to do is both divide both sides by K1. When we do that, we get this. We get a concentration of NOBR2 is equal to all this. So basically what we're going to do is take all of this and plug into that initial rate law we wrote with NRBR2. So we're going to have, instead of NOBR2, we're going to get rid of this, and all of these substances will be plugged in for that. So let's look at that. That's the next slide. So when you substitute that, basically we're going to end up with two NOs, a BR, and all the Ks, a bunch of Ks. So what we're going to do is Instead of all these K's like this, we're just going to simplify it and write K. Bam, there we are. We're going to combine both the NOs and have nitrogen, uh, nitrogen monoxide squared, so it's second order, then concentration of bromine. So the final rate law for this would be rate is equal to K times the concentration of nitrogen monoxide squared times the concentration of bromine. So there's two examples of how to use reaction mechanisms to write a rate law, which is our third, third and final method for writing rate laws. If you have any questions, let me know. We're going to be working on these tomorrow.